Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I hope that you all are doing fine. Now in this video, we are going to learn about the enamel and the dentine bonding. Now this is a very important topic both in terms of the exam perspective and also in clinical life. So I will be trying my best to make this topic easy and as simple as possible. So if you like the video, please do let me know in the comment section below and also give this video a like because it really motivates me to create more videos of this kind and if you want to cover your entire syllabus of dental materials or any other subject you can visit our website and enroll there another option to get many premium videos is to join channel membership we have four levels of membership and you can join the level that suits the best for you you can join the channel membership by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button so let's get started with the video now the first question is what is acid etching and why do we need to do this? So this guy, Dr. Michael Bunakor, we have heard about him in the composite, right? So he was the one who also pioneered this technique, acid etching technique. So what happens is like if we have a restorative material and let us suppose this is our cavity. Okay, so here you can see we have a smooth surface like the line angle point angle everything is smooth the entire surface is smooth okay so if we try to put the restorative material here they will not bond properly so we need micro mechanical bonding so what we can do we can apply acid onto the surface of the tooth and this acid within few seconds within say 50 to 60 seconds it will dissolve the enamel rod so when it dissolves the enamel rod it will form various micro and macro tags so these are basically the undercuts where our restorative material can now attach properly so that is acid etching and we also got the answer why we are doing it because we want a good attachment a good bond between the restorative material and the tooth surface now these undercuts they range from 10 to 15 micrometer means the depth of these undercut they range from 10 to 15 micrometer so these highly irregular and tortuous surface they will hold the composite resin in place now let us have a look at the acid etching procedure how do we do this right we cannot just apply the acid and leave it for any amount of time and it will happen we have to follow a certain guideline okay so the first thing that, that we need to do is surface treatment what is a surface treatment first of all we have to treat the surface of the tooth so the surface should be cleaned adequately with pumice the surface of the tooth should be cleaned because if we have oils or other organic component then the etchant that is the acid we are going to apply it will prevent that acid to properly etch the enamel we need the enamel to be clean okay so first we do the surface treatment that is we clean the tooth surface and then we apply the acid so here we can apply phosphoric acid in 30 to 40 percent concentration either you can use a brush or a syringe and then we have to wait okay this is a very important step we have to wait for 30 to 60 seconds now after we have waited that long we will be washing right we will be washing the etchant of the surface so when you wash it we have to wash it for 20 seconds and we will be getting a white frosted matte appearance not a matter appearance so this is a viva question that how do you know that your tooth has etched we see a white frosted appearance in the tooth and by that we can know that the surface of the tooth is etched now here we have to keep in mind that etching cannot continue too long why because if you continue the acid to stay there for too long then the dissolved appetite will re-precipitate as phosphate onto the etched surface so that will impact our bond again okay so just do it as mentioned in the product and this is how we do it like we apply the acid 
in 30 to 40 percent concentration we wait for 30 to 60 seconds and then after that we are going to wash it for 20 seconds so that all the acid is gone and we have a white frosted matte appearance and then finally we have the fourth stage that is the dry stage now after we have washed the surface we have to make sure that the surface is now free from oil or moisture if in case it is contaminated with saliva so we have to keep it free from oil or moisture now in the previous slide we saw that we are doing acid etching because we have to attach or we have to adhere a restorative material onto the surface of tooth so why are adhesives useful why we are not going with the conventional method of using amalgam where we have mechanical bonding right we just create a cavity having a certain you know guidelines like the tooth is cut in a particular shape so that we can get a proper mechanical bonding why instead of that we are going with the adhesive the first reason is there is reduction of micro leakage so with this technology there can be reduction of micro leakage we will need to have minimal tooth reduction that is because we don't need to have a proper cavity form we can only cut that surface of tooth that needs to be replaced like the carious portion discolored portion we don't need to have a proper cavity form here so we are going with minimal tooth reduction we are preserving the tooth structure that is a big plus and then we can obviously as i told you we can treat the enamel defect like if we have discolored enamel that can be easily masked by just removing that portion and applying the composite okay and then we can also modify the tooth anatomy right and then we can use it to fix the orthodontic brackets and also for attaching the bridges so that is why adhesives are useful and it is here to stay so we saw that an acid is involved in the acid etching procedure so can acid etching be harmful yes there can be various iatrogenic effects like the dentist did not intend to do it but it happened so there could be increased surface porosity of the enamel during etching there can be loss of enamel during etching means more loss of enamel than required loss of acquired fluoride in the outer surface of the enamel and we can have a rougher surface if we over etch it now in the previous slides we have learned about the enamel bonding let us move on to the dentine bonding and know that how is it different from the enamel bonding so just recall the structure of the tooth we have enamel right enamel has enamel rod okay and dentine what does it have it has dentinal tubules right and these dentinal tubules they are you know they are like tube they have opening and dentine is also a living tissue so dentine bonding is different from enamel bonding let's see how like when we etch the surface of the dentine the surface may contain open dentinal tubules obviously we have dentinal tubules the pipelines will open and they can be side effect on the pulp because these pipelines they lead to the pulp and also the dentine bonding is difficult because of more organic components in water like when we talk about the enamel it has more inorganic component but dentine has more organic component compared to the enamel and also it has more water so bonding is difficult the bonding ability of the dentine is difficult compared to the enamel also in dentine we have something called the smear layer so when we cut the dentine we get a layer of loosely adhered debris and that debris it is attached to the dentinal tubule means it will cover cover the dentinal tubule that debris will cover the dentinal tubule so that is called as a smear layer and we need to remove this because the composite that we are going to place on the tooth they will have to come and they will have to form resin tags means they will come and engage in the dentinal tubule so for them to come and engage in the dentinal tubule we need to have this pipeline or dentinal tubules open right and with that said let's move on to the dentine bonding agents in the dentine bonding agent we have 
three major ingredients. We have an agent. We have a primer, also called as the coupling agent. And we have adhesive. There are various generations of dentin bonding agent and with the time we have progress like today we don't need all these three bottles. We can just have one bottle or say one packaging or say one component and we can just apply it and get all the effect of these three. So let us first see what these do individually so that we can understand how we combine them together in various generations. Okay, so the first one in the list is the etchant. So basically these are the acids that will be removing the enamel rod. Remember, they remove the enamel rod to create the micro and macro tags. So these can be polyacrylic acid, phosphoric acid, nitric acid, citric, malic or tartaric acid. So any of these can be used depending on the brand we are having. Now what does it do? First of all, it cleans the surface. It removes the smearlure, it dissolves the hydroxypatite crystal and it roughens the surface. Now here I would like to talk about something called the wet bonding. So when we apply the etching to the surface of the dentine, we allow it to stay there for say 15-20 seconds and then we wash it off with copious amount of water. And then we dry the surface very lightly by blowing air. So here we have to keep in mind that we don't over dry the tooth surface. Actually we want some kind of moisture to stay in the dentine and that is referred to as wet bonding. And why do we need some amount of water to be there? Because that water molecule they will, so let us suppose this is the dentinal tubule and we have water inside. So what it will do, so when we add the restorative material here, so when the restorative material reaches here, this water, this will help this restorative material to come inside and form tag. Basically you can say that it guides the resin or the restorative material to form a tag. Okay. Coming to the next one that is the primer. Basically these are hydrophilic in nature means they love water. And basically they make the surface of the tooth more favorable for accepting a bond. And we'll see how. So in primer we have a solvent. And that solvent has many hydrophilic monomers. Okay. We already know that right. Primer is hydrophilic in nature. So in primer we have a solvent and that solvent it carries Many monomers, these monomers are hydrophilic monomers. The solvent can be acetone, it can be ethanol water, or it can just be water. There are a few primers available that are solvent free, and one disadvantage of the primer is that. Its components are volatile, so it can create a biohazard. Now, in the previous slide, we had seen the role of water, right? Like water helps the tags to form. So, our primer, it helps the water to displace. Means it displaces the water so that resin tags can form. So, that is how it is helping to make the surface of the tooth more favorable to accept a bond. We have to keep in mind that during the dentine bonding, the dentine should not be too dry nor too wet. So here we have the dentinal tubules. If we dry the surface too much, what will happen? These tubules will collapse. So the primer cannot penetrate inside these tubules. And if the dentine is too moist, means we have too much water here, first of all the primer will be diluted. And secondly, having too much water can interfere with the resin penetration inside. Right? Coming to the third one that is the adhesive. So, adhesives are unfilled or lightly filled resins to which the hydrophilic molecules have been added. The resin that we get in the composite, they are similar to that. The only difference is that we are adding hydrophilic molecules. 
Now adhesives, they help in the formation of a hybrid layer. And you must be wondering what is a hybrid layer. So hybrid layer is basically a zone of resin reinforced dentine. Means a dentine, a dentine that has resin incorporated in it. That is a resin reinforced dentine. So what happens is we apply the adhesive onto the tooth surface that will penetrate our dentine okay and then we will light cure it for around 10 seconds so then this adhesive will bond to the dentine here our dentine is already demineralized because we have etched it right so it will bond to the demineralized dentine by interlocking the surfaces so that is how we get a hybrid layer Coming to a very important topic, the generations of the dentine bonding agents.